Tonight, the Columbia Workshop brings you an adaptation of a story by W.W. W. Jacobs called The Circular Tour. This story depends for much of its comic excellence upon the dialect in which it is originally written. The piece has been adapted for radio by Eustace Wyatt. Mr. Wyatt has appeared in many hundreds of radio broadcasts and is known to thousands of listeners as one of the most versatile actors in the profession. That he is also a writer is not so well known to the public. Two years ago, the Columbia Workshop presented his engaging fantasy, Public Domain, and more recently, High Boy. In tonight's production, Mr. Wyatt will be heard in the part of the cabbie. We present a circular tour. A Circular Tour is one of the many reminiscences of the night watchman concerning three of his hardy, seagoing pals, Ginger Dick, Old Sam Small, and Peter Russett. The night watchman has propped himself comfortably against the niggerhead on the wharf in the little fishing village of the Huxtable. Taking a long pull at his blackened clay pipe, he's pondering a question put to him by his companion, the vacationing artist. The visitor is speaking. But I suppose sailormen don't often get sick when they're ashore, do they? Oh, yes, Governor. More oftener than you'd think. I remember the time old Sam Small got sick. Thought he was a-dying. Him and Ginger Dick and Peter Russell were sharing a room at the time. They all came home about ten o'clock one night. I remember the time because I was just after the pubs closed. None of them was feeling very well. Something they ate, I suppose. But old Sam said he felt so horrible, he went to bed in the fireplace with his head right under the chimbley. Long about half past eleven, he started an horrible groaning. Oh, oh Ginger! Oh, nobody come and help me. Oh, I'm dying. Wake up and help me, Ginger! Ginger! Oh, is that you, Sam? Oh. What are you making them horrible noises for? Oh. What's the matter? Oh, I'm really sick, Ginger. I believe I'm dying. Goodbye, Ginger. Goodbye, Sam. <laughs> and be as quiet as you can about it. I want to get some more sleep. Oh. And I wouldn't wake up Peter if I was you. Fair tell he is when he's woke up. Well, goodbye. But that's a nice way to treat a pal, ain't it? Peter! Peter! Wake up, Peter. I'm dying. Ah, oh, what a thing to do in the middle of the night. Uh, Why can't you wait till morning? What's the matter, Peter? I ain't Sam dead yet. Not yet, Ginger. Bad half dead, I should think. And he's been using terrible language. Poor old Sam. It's sitting on him hard, ain't it? Uh, you feel any pain, Sam? Pain? Why, me and this is like a bile effect. Peter, I think you're wrong. He looks more than half dead to me. About three quarters, I should say. Oh. Well, never mind, Sam. It won't be long now. Oh, don't you think we'd better undress him, Peter? It ain't decent to die with your clothes on. I think I'd better have a doctor. No, you, Sam, you're past doctors. You'd better have your last moments in peace, Sam, and keep your money for the funeral. You go and get me a doctor, you murderers. Go on or I'll come back and haunt you with me ghost, you lopsided swab. Oh, I suppose you might as well humor him, Peter. You know, I'll go and get a doctor and you stay here and comfort him. Oh. It might be too late by the time I gets back. Goodbye, Sam, if I don't see you again. <coughs> nice pair of pals, aren't you? Watching of me die without even raising a finger to help me. We was only doing it for your own good, Sam. Oh. And what's the use of spending your bit of money on doctors when the end's so near and certain? Oh. Sinful waste, I call it. Well, it's my money, ain't it? And if I'm going to die, I shan't want it anyway, shall I? No, Sam, you won't want it. But there's others, Sam. There's others. Well... Of all the arts. There he is, Governor. Here you are. I've brought the doctor, sir. Oh, good evening, my man. Not feeling very well, are you? Taint me, Watsil. It's him. What? You a doctor? He looks more like a undertaker to me. No, his brother's an undertaker. Very convenient, too, in a case like this, if you ask me. Well, why don't he get on with his doctor? Uh, open your shirt, please. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, That's right. 
Now, take a long, deep breath. Say, ah. Ah. I thought so. Does it hurt you very badly? It hurts something horrible. Is it serious, Doctor? I'm afraid it is. Very serious. Am I dying? We are not very robust, you know. Do you think he lost the day, Doctor? Mm, yes, he might last the day. Oh. We, we might keep him alive several days if he does just what I tell him and takes the medicine I send him. Oh. Uh, go and ask the landlady for a mustard plaster, will you? A good, strong one. All right, Doctor. Uh, uh, not too strong, Governor. I can't stand much more pain. Well, you're to be ashamed of yourself, Sam, trying to teach the doctor his job. Well, someone's got to teach him, haven't they? Don't look as if he knows much about it to me. Come, come, my man. You've got to feel worse before you can feel better. I couldn't feel no worse, and I don't believe as how you could never make me feel no better. Oh, in that case, I'll leave you. My fee is half a crown. If you want this prescription made up, the chemist will charge you a shilling. By the way, what's your name? You there. Oh, they calls me Ginger. Uh, what's the patient's name? They calls him Sam. Sam? Sam what? Sam Small. Sam, Sam Small. Thank you. Got to have the full name for the certificate, you know. But you might find another doctor before then. Well, good night. Uh, what, uh, what certificate was he talking about, Ginger? No, never you mind about that, Sam. You won't have to worry. Well, what do you mean, Ginger? Do you mean that... Oh, Lord, help me. Here's the mustard plaster for you, Sam. Boiling hot and full of wicked. Oh, I ain't going to have it, I'll tell you. I think no use arguing with him, Peter. If he won't take it peaceful, we've got to force him. Yeah, come on, I'll sit on his head oh, while you strap no, up. No, that's right, that's right. Get him down. Wait a minute, I'll for Sam. I told you as how he was sick. So he is, Mrs. Huggins. Horrible sick. And now he's getting violent. Fighting. Oh, the beautiful mustard blaster is you was kind enough to make for him. Oh, I ain't so sick as all that, Mrs. Huggins. I don't want no mustard plaster. It'll ruin my constitution. Oh, it will, will it? Not half as bad as what I'll ruin if you don't have it. Come on now, stop that hollering and open your shirt. I don't want it, I did. Shut your head, will you? Mm. All right, Peter, give me the plaster. No. <laughs> oh, there oh. now, it ain't so bad, is it? No. I'll take it off for it burns bad. I wouldn't take it off too soon, Huggins. You mind your own business, you weasel-faced old toad. Or I'll give you something as won't you won't take off in our Now look here, Ruggins. And you too, you old dumb bug. Well, nice pair you are to be looking after a man what's dying. Be off with you, both of you. I'll oh, go. Uh, go on, not another word now. Get out. Oh, no, all right. I did ruin yourself. Now then, Sam, you poor old dear. How do you feel? The plaster's is beginning to burn something horrible. Let me have a look. Oh, yes. It is getting a bit raw like, but we'd better leave it on a few minutes longer. No, no, take it off now. I'm feeling better, much better. Oh, you poor dear soul. What's the matter with you, Ruggins? That's a bad sign, horrible bad. They always feels better just for the end. You're talking through your hat, you old harpy. No, I ain't, Sam Small. Help me. It's gospel truth, I'm telling you. Well, I knows. I can remember me poor dear first husband just before he died. Happy as a Greek he was. So should I if I'd been him. What's that? I, I, I mean, it must be horrible to wake up after you're dead and find you ain't dead after all. Yes, horrible. Well, uh, What's to prevent it? There's ways. After the doctor says you're dead good and proper, I'll have him cut your head off. But supposing I ain't dead and wakes up in the middle of it? Well, we'd be doing our best, wouldn't we? Help me, there ain't not, nothing no pleasing some people. I'm going to leave you now. You'd better write a note for Peter and Ginger. Tell her where you'd like to be buried. <laughs> If 
if I ever gets my hands on that there Huggins, she won't have to worry about burying her second husband. I see worse. Bloody Peter, if he hasn't gone and took all his clothes off. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, look at his chest, like a piece of raw beef. What do you mean? Going out and leaving me to burn to death with a mustard plaster. Now, we come back a couple of hours ago, Sam, but you were sleeping so peaceful like. We crept out and went and had an half pint at the horse and plough, just to keep our hearts from breaking. Oh, yes. Yes. And while we was there, we got an inspiration. Yes? Yes. How would you like to go to an hospital, Sam? An hospital? Me? Yes. Wonderful whittles. Jelly and ham and herrings and tripe and onions and beautiful nurses to feel your pulse and weight on your hand and foot. And you won't keep your best friends awake at night to break in their hearts with your horrible groans. And who's going to pay for it? All the money I've got is a 22 quid in me trousers pocket. Oh, that's the beauty of it, Sam. The parish pays for it. You can keep what you've got to give to your loving friends, which always taking such good care of you. Yes. Well, uh, how does I get to the hospital? Well, we'd have to take a cab. I've just told Peter to go out and get one. And who pays for it? Oh, well, you'll have to pay for that, Sam. Well, why don't the parish do it? Well, parish is this funny thing, Sam. They'll help a bloke to die, but they won't help him to live. But I ain't dying now, Ginger. You will be when you get to the hospital. I got a cab for you, Sam. Oh, you like the driver. Quite a car, he is. <laughs> what kind of a cab is it? Handsome or four-wheeler? Four-wheeler, of course. Couldn't take a sick bloke like you in an handsome. All right. You give me a hand to put my clothes on. Oh, better not bother about clothes, Sam. They'll only burn them at the hospital. No, wrap yourself up in a blank in the counterpane, and me and Peter will carry you downstairs. But what about me money? There ain't no pockets in the blanket and the counterpane. Oh, I'll look after your money for you. Pay, pay the cabman and everything. You open the door, Peter. That's right. Now, off we go. <laughs> All right, driver. You give us a hand to get him in, will you? Right, George, good day. Let me get an hold on him. Here, leave go of that there blanket, will you? You think I want to catch me death of cold? Who are you a talking to, eh? Better keep a civil tongue in your head, you had. You was a pulling the blanket off me. Oh, was I? Well, I wasn't trying to. Swoke me, you ain't no blooming weenus. What hospital are you going to take him to, Gabney? Well, we was thinking of the London. London hospital it is. It'll be free and sixpence, and I'll have me money now. You'll have it when we get there. And suppose it dies on the way. What then? No, I'll have it now, or you can get out and walk. Oh, I wonder if your mother ever had an husband. All right, Ginger. Give him three and six. Thank you, Gabney. Get on, Horace. Don't take us long to get there. How do you feel now, Sam? Pretty dicky, Peter. Pretty dicky. Never mind, Sam. Think how much worse it would be if you didn't have me and Ginger looking after you. Would it? Nah. What do you think of that, Ginger? Strike me. Some blokes don't know when they're well off. Well, it's hard to tell sometimes. Now, look here, Sam. Uh, hey, what are we stopping for, eh? Big pardon, give me. Have you got any particular fancy for the London hospital? No. Why? Well, I suppose it don't make no difference if you're dying like your mate says you are. What do you mean? Nothing. Only I suppose I've drove nearly 500 blokes to that there hospital one time than ever, and only one on them ever come out alive. And he was smuggled out in a bread basket by a bloke as had lent him five quid. Now, if I was you, I'd try the Charing Cross. It's a good hospital. They only lose his four out of five over there. All right, drive me there. Well, it's a longish way and cost you another half a crown. I'd try the London if I was you. You do as I say and drive me to Charing Cross. Give him half a dollar, Jimsy. Waste of money, I called it with you so near the end. All right, if you say so. Well, here you are, driver. Thank you, Gabney. And if you give me another four, Bob, I'll take you along to Guy's Hospital. Maybe you can find a bed for him there. Four, Bob? Well, that, that'll make an awful thicken with what we give you already. It's right, Gabney. Well, 
It's a heart rate. Never mind. Give it to him, Ginger. I don't want to die in the street. You'd save us a lot of money if you was to. Half a thicken. Oh, blimey. All right, here you are, driver. You wait a minute. Oh, I'm going to cross to that pub. See, to get something to pull myself together. You coming, Peter? I don't think as how an half a pint would do me any harm. Me neither. I'll come with you. And what about me? I want one too. Don't leave me alone. All right, Sam. We'll send one out for you. Good evening, gentlemen. What can I have the pleasure? Thank you to fork me, please, miss. Yes, that's sir. about right for me too, miss. All right, sir. Well, if you ain't a pair of mind readers, that's exactly what I'm going to have. <laughs> oh, is it? And who's you going to pay for it? Eh, uh, Governor, you surely don't expect me to pay for me own drop of beer after all the trouble I've had of getting of you here. Where's my off point? Yeah, I'll get your pal outside what's dying. You won't even give him a drink. <laughs> nice pair of blokes you are, I must say. All right, all right. Here, miss, send one out to the gentleman in the cab, will you? Oh, this ain't a cafe in Paris. Why don't he come in and get it? He can't. He's dying. Dying? Whatever are? These two blokes here has got all his money. They're starving of him to death. Oh. Here, Harry, take this out to the gentleman in the cab. And we'd better be getting out ourselves. What do you think, Ginger? What say is we has just one more, eh? Oh, don't suppose it'd do us any harm. But you, you fill them up, Miss Williams. Three or five it is, sir. <laughs> Hurry up, can't you? Do you want to keep me waiting out here all night? Yeah, there's your pal hollering for you. Poor old Sam. Well, Peter, I suppose as how we'd better be getting of him to the hospital. Might as well. We can stop and have another one on the way back. That's right. Come on, driver. This is a nice way for a couple of pals to treat a bloke. I don't think. Now then, Sam, don't get peevish. We've got to have a drop of lotion driving all over London on a night like this. I should think we had. And we could have been in bed hours ago if it hadn't been for you and your sickness. Now, oh, shut your head and get in and take me to the hospital. All right. Half a mile, Gabney. There's a little matter of fare first. What? Well, we paid you your fare. Yes. For taking of you to the hospital. Because five bob extra for waiting. What? Five bob? It's what I said. Two hours at an half a dollar an hour. That makes five bob, don't it? Well, of all the slit-eyed buzzards as ever I see... Now, that's enough of that. You're going to pay me, ain't you? No, we ain't. All right. Get him out of my cab and I'll go on home. Oh, pay him, Ginger. It's my money. You mind your own business and speak when you spoke to. Go on, get inside, Peter. I'll attend to this. All right, Ginger. Here, here. You're not inside the pub. Inside the cab. Yes, strike me ugly. Here, Peter, Peter, come back here. Well, what's the matter well, now? look. Where? Right there. Well, I don't see nothing. Well, of course you don't. Where's the cab? Gone. Struth of mighty. And where's Sam? Well, he's gone too. Kidnapped. Poor old Sam. At his age, and half dead too. What are we going to do, Ginger? Yeah, let's go in and have half a pint and talk it over. I've got his money in my pocket. More than 20 quid. <laughs> you can buy a lot of beer with 20 quid. <laughs> Whoa, Horace. Hello. Is this the hospital? Hey, what's this? I thought as how I'd put you out of this here cab. Well, if you'll have another look, you'll find as how you didn't. Is this the hospital? No, it ain't. Then what are we stopping for? Because this is as far as we are going. Where are we? We are home. At least me and Horace is. This is Horace's stable. And a very nice stable it is, too. Ain't it, Horace? Come on. You witch that there animal up again and take me to the hospital. Oh, yes? Yes. And if you don't do it immediately, I'll go for the police. Well, go for him. And mind you, don't catch cold on the way. 
Come on, Ori. Here, here. If you don't come back, I'll give you in charge for kidnapping me. Kidnapping? Eh, it's a good one. Who do you think wants to kidnap you? You can go as quick as you want to. The quicker the better, because I'm going to bed as soon as I give Horace his oats. Oh, well, how can I go anywhere like this? Walk. Do you expect me to walk all over London in nothing but a blanket? I don't expect nothing no more. I've had so many horrible disappointments in my life. Ain't you got any sense? I can't stay here all night. You can if you want to. You can sleep with Horace. What would you do if you was me? Well, if I was you, the first thing I'd do would be to keep a civil tongue in me head. I wouldn't go about accusing hard-working men of kidnapping. But that, that was only a joke. Oh, I'm very fond of me, little joke. So am I. But I've always found as jokes comes very expensive. I ain't a kidnapping of you, am I? No, certainly not. Of course I ain't. Then the next thing I'd do, if I was you, I'd be to ask the bloke what owns this nice warm stable, that's me, to let me have a night's lodging in it for an half a crown. An half a crown? That's right. Then in the morning, if I was you, I should ask the bloke to take a letter to me mates, asking them to send me a suit of clothes and eleven and sixpence. Eleven and six? Yes. Five bob for two hours waiting, four bob for driving of your year, and a half a crown for sleeping in the stable. That's fair, ain't it? Mm. I suppose it's got to be. That's all right, then. Come over here and I'll get you some straw to lie on. Here we are. Get over, Horace. Hey, you'll be happy as a snuggie. Mind you don't knock the lantern over and burn yourself to death. Good night. Oh, strike me if this ain't an hour to do. How can a bloke get any sleep with that there any mile of fidget in a bad like that? Wait till I get hold of Peter and Ginger. Wait till I get an old of them. What a pair of pals. Water, well, here we are again. How are you, Gibney? Have a good night. Might have been better. Well, what do you expect for an half a crown? Strike me, there ain't no satisfying some people. So I've noticed. What's that? Nothing. What you got in that basket? It's me breakfast. Oh. Tea and fresh bread and butter and bloaters. Nothing like a bloater for breakfast, I says. Do you... Did you think you could get me some? Sorry, Governor. We ain't got never one in the house. Oh, blimey. Still, I hates to see a bloke go hungry. I'll let you have this if you'll make that letter for a pan instead of eleven and sixpence. A pan? It's highway robbery. Take it or leave it. I'll just as soon eat it myself. Oh, all right. I'll take it. Give it to you. Half a mouth, Governor. How about writing that there letter? I'll write the letter as soon as I finish my breakfast. Oh, no. You finish the letter before you get your breakfast. Here's paper and pencil. Do you want it? Mm. Oh, all right. What's your mate's name? The one what's got the money? Ginger. All right. Now write what I tells you. Ready? Dear Ginger. Why should I call him that? We ain't married. Shut your head. Dear Ginger. Dear Ginger. What is how the bearer of this year? What is how the bearer of this year? Has given me a comfortable night's lodging. Has given me a comfortable night's lodging. And a nice hot breakfast. Well, I haven't had it yet. You won't never have it unless you hold your jaw and write what I told you. Come on. And a nice, hot breakfast. And a 
Nice, hot breakfast. And I would like you to give him... And I would like you to give him... A suit of clothes for me. A suit of clothes for me. And a pan for himself. And a pan for himself. For valuable service rendered. The valuable service rendered, and God forgive me. Yeah, don't put that in. All right. Yours respectable, Sam Small. Yours respectable, Sam Small. Is that all? It's all. Give it to me. Right on. Here's your breakfast. Uh, I'm going to take this letter now, and I'll be back at four o'clock. That's nine hours. I can't wait here all that time. I've got to earn me living, haven't I? Look here. You take me home in a cab, and I'll give you the money when we get there. I couldn't trust you. You'd run into the house and slam the door in me face. No, no, I wouldn't. You could leave me in the cab a couple of streets away while you went and got the money from Ginger. Oh, I couldn't get out in this blanket. All right. Make this year letter for 30 bob instead of a quid and I'll go yet. 30 bob? 30 bob it is. <laughs> Very well. Give it to you. There you are. 30 bob. <laughs> it's right. Uh, get in the cab and we'll have your home in no time. <laughs> This is a nice thing. The landlady says they haven't been home all night. Neither on them. I suppose they've been looking for me. I wonder. Well, what are we going to do? Let me go into the house and wait for them. And I'll send you the money when they come home. I'll let you go in. But you needn't send the money. I'll call for it. All right. You give me an end. What time will you be back for the money? In about three hours. And mind you got it. Hey, hey. Wait a minute. Suppose they've been out in the loose and have spent all your money. What then? Oh, that's all right. That won't make no difference. Won't make no difference? No difference at all. Not to you, I mean. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Sam. He wasn't quite such a fool as he seemed, eh? Law love you, he'd know, sir. Sam wasn't no fool. Stupid like, but he wasn't no fool. Did they ever hear from the cabman again? Nary a word, sir. What happened when Peter and Ginger returned? Well, they'd had a bit of a fracas like for a while, and they all made it up and was friends again. Had Peter and Ginger spent all Sam's money? Lord love you, no, sir. They wasn't that kind to do the likes of that. Sammy got the feeling better right away. So they all went out that very same day and had a right proper time together. And when the money was all gone, I suppose they found another ship. Yes, sir. The three of them together. Ginger said as how if there was to be any dying to be done, they might as well do it afloat. Because then they'd be slipped over the side and it wouldn't cost them nothing for a funeral. Yes, sir. Sailors are queer critters, they are. They certainly are. Uh, thank you, watchman. Perhaps you could use this on your way home. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. I do pass right by the crown and anchor, I do. This wharf gets mighty cold afore morning, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. <laughs> Columbia Workshop has brought you A Circular Tour by W.W. W. Jacobs, adapted for radio by Eustace Wyatt. Original music was written and directed by Alexander Semler. The entire production was under the direction of Earl McGill. Next week at the same time, the Columbia Workshop will bring you an original comedy by Frank Gould, titled The Wonderful Day. 
This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.